welcome to this week's webinar Wednesday. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Tanya Blakely. I'm the Director of Communications and Public Relations at the SRNA. Um, and before we start, I just want to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 4 land and we recognize the strength and resilience and capacity of the Treaty 4 Métis people on this land. So our topic today is nominating a colleague for SRNA Council, and I'm excited to introduce Joanne Peterson, who is the chair of the nominations committee. Um, most of you will be very familiar with Joanne. But before we get started, just a couple of notes on how you can engage during the presentation. Um, as a viewer of this webinar, you will be able to hear and see the presentation but only panelists will be able to speak throughout the presentation. So if you have any questions, um, you just select the Q&A on, on the bottom of your screen, type in the questions and we'll be monitoring them and we'll ensure that Joanne answers them throughout the webinar. So we will be recording the webinar as well to be posted on the SRNA, um, our, on our YouTube channel. Uh, so people will be able to view it after as well. And it'll also be posted on the SRNA website. So now that we have those housekeeping items over the way, I'm going to, or out of the way, I'm going to turn it over to Joanne Peterson. Thank you, Tanya and team at the SRNA. I always, it's, I'm always just so marveled at the technology and the ability that we have to connect across the province. So um, I too am on Treaty 4 territory. I'm on uh, my home here in Southern Saskatchewan, South Amusha. Delighted to be with you. Thank you everyone for joining and for those people that are gonna watch this um, later on when you get a chance. Um, glad to have you. Uh, expressing some interest in uh, how you go about nominating, or maybe you're considering running for councillor nominations yourself, and you just want a little bit more information. So let's dig right into that. Um, we do have an hour, right? We'll probably be under an hour though, I suspect. Okay, so our outline for today, just gonna talk very briefly about policy governance because it is the governance model that uh, SRNA Council uses. We're gonna talk about the bylaws that allow us to do this work, the, this election. Uh, we're gonna talk about the roles of the, our, the nominations committee, of which I am currently the chair. We're gonna talk about the roles of members at large on council, the role of president-elect. We're gonna talk about what seats are open this year for the 2020 election that will take place in May at the annual general meeting in Regina. And then we'll talk a little bit about the, the nomination information. And I just want to remind everyone up front that all of this information is very readily available on the SRNA website. If you go to the home page and you scroll across the top to the little search icon, which looks like a little magnifying glass, and you type in SRNA elections, everything will come up and you'll be able to get through that, including the nomination package. So with that, Policy governance, very simply stated, it, so we have to have a governance model of what the role of the board is and our relationship with the CEO and then her relationship with the staff. And in there, our owners, and in for the SRNA, our owners are our members, but they're also our public because as the regulatory body, we exist to protect the public. So the public, the Saskatchewan people are our owners. So the board takes the wishes of the owners, then translates that and says to the CEO, this is, um, this is what we, how we expect this organization to perform. And we set up what's called ends. Um, and then the CEO takes that and she rolls with that to the staff. And then uh, you see on the output side, you get the relevant results. And, an example of a relevant result is this webinar right now. So the board said to the CEO, we have to have a robust election process and the staff has made this happen. So that is essentially how policy governance works. And there's a link there. Um, if you wanna know a little bit more about SRNA Council, you can also just, again, go to that icon um, on the search page of uh, the SRNA homepage and you will can just type in council and a lot of that information is there. Okay, so the work we do is governed by the laws of nursing land and the laws of nursing land are, are the SRNA bylaws. Bylaws are 
voted on and approved by the members, by the S, by nurses like you and me, uh, nurse practitioners, um, RNs with additional authorized practice. So bylaws are voted on at every AGM, uh, and those are the laws of nursing land. So let's take a look at what the laws of nursing land or the bylaws are around um, elections. So um, the first bylaw, bylaw one, uh, section three is about the nominations committee. And it says that the nominations committee shall be composed of four people and our terms are two years. So two of those people have to be practicing members and they're elected for staggered terms. So every year we actually have a nominations election because someone's always going off, okay? One member is appointed by council and they have to have previously been on council. And traditionally, the way we manage this is that the past president, um, so they don't go into withdrawal, uh, they're allowed to sit, they're appointed to sit as chair of this committee. And that's my role. And uh, it's a great way to stay involved, but to just gradually uh, move out of um, of the president's role. And uh, I know a lot of other regulatory bodies, uh, you know, talking with Salpin and RPNAS, they don't do that. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm quite happy that we do. So, um, and finally, the fourth, per fourth person on council is a public rep. Every committee of the SRNA has a public rep or sometimes more than one public rep. And that public rep has to have previous governance experience. So right now, sitting on this committee, just to give you an idea of who, who's on it, our two practicing members are Melissa Sawicki from Prince Albert, Carolyn Bakawi from Saskatoon, uh, myself as the um, chair, and then our public rep is Andy Anderson. And I know that they were gonna try and join, and so they are likely on the line listening to this. Thank you, thank you for your work this past uh, month, and thank you for joining the webinar. Um, okay, so our duties, it's very simple. We need to slip, fill a slate of candidates for any elected positions. So that's council and the nominations committee. So trivia for you. Um, this, our work and our position, so nominations and council, are the only elected positions within the SRNA. Everything else, every other committee that exists, and there are many of them from investigations and discipline to awards to, um, uh, to the MAC, the Membership Advisory Committee, to education uh, review, there's tons of committees. There's an IPAC committee, there, there's, we, got, we got a lot of committees because there's a lot of work. Um, but all of those committees, those people are appointed either through council or the Membership Advisory Committee. So the only elected positions for members within the SRNA are council and nominations. So there's your bit of trivia for the day. So we have to fill that slate of candidates. And just this is just this was an added piece a couple of years ago, a new bylaw that was approved by the membership. Um, so you can only be elected for two terms. Uh, sorry, this is not the new piece. Um, once you're on the nominations committee, if you choose to run again, you can run. So you could essentially be on for four years, but at the end of those two terms, you then you have to go off. And that that stands for uh, almost all of our committees. You can the terms are very limited. You can't just stay on here. You can't be a lifer, right? So we we want to keep more people involved. So and then this is the new piece. So you can only stand for election either at council in one position or on nominations. You can't have your name on the ballot saying, well, I'd like to be the president-elect, but if I don't get that, I'd be a member at large. But if I don't get that, I'd like to be a nomination. We, we no longer, um, members voted on that, and you have to let your name stand for simply one position. Okay, so a little bit more about our committee that isn't on this slide that I just wanted to share. Uh, for those of you that may be considering nominating or being nominated for nominations. Our role is very time limited. Our work is essentially done right now. So we start in September, we have a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, once 
uh, license renewal starts and all of those members who are renewing their licenses click on those where what they might be interested in and this year with that new uh, database it was absolutely amazing and and people checked um, I'm interested in council I'm interested in nominations and so that gives us a basis to start our work. So interesting, another little trivia for you. We actually had 174 uh, nurses and nurse practitioners um, tick the box saying they might be interested in um, running for council or nominations. So that's where our work starts. We then divide that list up. We start calling. We come up with a plan of what that's going to look like. And then our work essentially is complete once uh, nominations close. So it's a nice committee to get on just to start getting your feet wet within the SRNA because the time frame, like I say, is just the fall. We tend to do our work. Uh, some of you may, uh, who may be interested and may have ticked that box have gotten a call from one of us on the committee. And uh, people say, well, why are you calling me now? Like it's October, it's November. Well, because we know December, we're all tied up with uh, holidays and uh, getting in the festive spirit. So um, we tend to do our work a little bit ahead and then we really ramp up in January before the, the deadline for nominations, which is January 27th. So that's a little bit about the work we do. Okay, now let's go on to the role of council members. So again, within bylaw, uh, the council and section three, so it's bylaw one, section three, these are the powers and functions of council. So council is there to govern, remember that governance um, slide, they're to govern, manage, and regulate the affairs and business of the association. And they do that by establishing policies, as I talked about, to further the goals of the association. They establish policies regarding exams, so that's licensing exams, licensing, temporary licensing, and admission of members. They also establish policies regarding investigations and discipline, and they establish policies governing the financial affairs of the association. Council also recommends any bylaw changes. So any time they see that we need to have a bylaw change in order to uh, you know, keep things moving within the organization or to update, and I'm gonna talk about uh, some of the bylaw changes from last year, some of the updates that are needed. We know that things are always changing. Um, council also evaluates the association. And by that, what it actually means is council has one employee and that is the executive director. So, we ev the council evaluates the executive director based on how well she's meeting those ends, those targets that we have set. Um, we are required to submit an audited financial statement at the annual meeting to all members. That is also required to be submitted uh, to government and it has to be available to the public. And our role is to link with members and the public. So that is what it says in the laws of nursing land that we are to do and we are going to expand um, on that a little bit. So if you're considering running for council, um, you can anticipate uh, a minimum, this is minimum, 22 days of council business and that business is face-to-face um, -face business or just like this, we utilize technology quite frequently, we utilize the Zoom platform. So um, all the council meetings, this is, this is very interesting and very helpful to members. I had, um, of those 174 members that expressed interest, I have talked to um, uh, uh, quite a large chunk. We divided, we divided it uh, between the four of us on the committee. And what some of them said to me, well, you know, my daughter's getting married in like 2021 and I wouldn't want that to conflict. And, and I simply say to them, all council meetings are set two years in advance. So you can go on the SRNA website right now and look at all the 2020 council meetings and the 2021 council meetings. So that, that member was very relieved. She said, oh good, I'll go do that, see if anything conflicts. So in terms of council meetings, uh, these are the meetings including the annual meeting and then we have an annual retreat in August. 
And then, as I said, there is other days where it might be a Zoom meeting, you might be needed, uh, we may need to pull a group together to meet with government or with other officials, other agencies. There's lots of events that council, uh, we like to send delegates to, representatives to. And then we also um, do some work at our, at our individual membership areas. So, um, so all of that, uh, they've given a total of 22 days. So I think an important piece here that I'd like to add is that when you're considering a nomination, it is really important to have, one of the first things that you should do is talk to your boss, talk to your nurse manager, talk to your CEO, whoever you work under, and say to them, I'm considering this and I'm going to need your support. That is a critical first step. Um, because if you put your name on the ballot, and you win, and you're now the member at large for region one, and you go to your manager and say, oh, by the way, I'm gonna need these days off, it may not go over quite so well. So it's, you know, it's um, just a, a very nice professional gesture um, to uh, upfront say, let, your, let the person know who's gonna need to give you that time off um, that you're considering running. And I, um, would hope that within the Saskatchewan Health Authority that uh, there would be support for that. I know that as president-elect, uh, I worked as a point-of-care nurse in the Cinnaboya, and I had excellent support for the time off that I needed, and, uh, uh, and, and, and most of our council members do, so um, that is an important piece up front. Okay. So, we have members at large. We also have the president-elect seat up this year. We're in a bit of an awkward uh, transition right now, and maybe awkward isn't the, the right word because we always can roll with things. We're nurses, right? Um, so last year we had last year was when we should have elected a president-elect, but we didn't have anyone uh, put their name on the ballot. So council chose to appoint, which is totally within the laws of nursing land, that is completely supported by the Registered Nurses Act. So they appointed a president-elect to fill this year until we can get someone's name on the ballot for next year. But what that means is that the person this year for 2020 that's gonna go on is only gonna have a one year uh, succession to the president. Normally you have two years, and then you succeed to the president, but the person running will just have one year this year because of um, that stagger. So the duties of the president-elect, if the president is unable to function uh, to perform their duties, then you uh, step in for them. You are also the chairperson of the Legend Bylaw Committee. So that's where you start getting your feet wet, getting involved in uh, those important pieces around uh, required legislation and bylaws. And then you assume any duties that the council or the president um, needs you to. So you're there as backup for that president. You're also there under their wing and you're really learning and growing. So you grow into uh, that role and you then succeed to the office of the president. And the president's uh, term is two years. So you do two years as president elect, although this year it'll just be one, two years as president, and then two years as past president, you chair nominations. So that's how it all flows. Okay, members at large. So we talked about what the role of the whole council is. We talked about the president elect. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the members at large. So in the event that the president or president elect isn't there, you, the, the, the members at large have to choose someone from within their ranks to uh, be the chair to perform the duties of the president. Let's say it's at a meeting and both of them have to be gone, someone has to chair. Um, and then it's assign other duties. And I already talked a little bit about that, how you know there might be a meeting at the legislature with the Minister of Health and uh, president will say, okay, I need three council members. And so three that are able to go, go that day. Um, it may be there was just the power conference in, Sas in uh, Regina yesterday. So, you know, who from council is able to attend and represent there. So all of those little things, uh, you know, there's awards for the students. Pro one of the most wonderful parts of being on council is being able to attend those graduation ceremonies, um, those co that 
and uh, present the awards and bring greetings on behalf of the SRNA. So it's, it's duties like that. And those come up um, as the year goes along. And um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really nice piece of being on council, I, I must say. Okay. So this is a picture of the current council, but I did notice that we're missing a few people here. So, um, so your president, Warren Cook, is sitting there right in the middle in the red tie. Um, I just want to draw your attention to the far left side. That is Elder Jean Sutherland, who is our Indigenous elder on council. Um, and then the two gentlemen standing at the back, uh, bookends, um, are two of our public reps. We do have another public rep. Um, and then right in the middle with the glasses, just uh, to the right of Warren, is Cindy Smith, our executive director. The rest of the people there are registered nurses, uh, nurse practitioner, and they are your members at large. But I do see that we are missing uh, a couple in that picture. So anyway, so that's, uh, that's the current council. Okay, so I'm um, going to talk a little bit now, move on to what actually is up for election this year. So who are the, SR, the uh, nominations committee? What are we targeting right now? So what we're targeting, I talked about the one-year term for the president-elect. We are targeting Region 1 and Region 2 for a three-year term. So if you look at your map uh, there, Region 1 is that southwest area of the province, and Region 2 is the southeast area of the province. So before I go any further, I want to talk a little bit about our new electoral map. So remember back at the beginning of the presentation, I talked about uh, how members vote on bylaw changes. Council recommends these changes, the legend bylaw committees involved. And then we take it to the members and we say, this is what we're proposing. So this past year, with the change the year before to one integrated um, health region, we looked at our electoral map. And we said, now is a golden opportunity to update it um, and really um, get some of, the, uh, some of the diversity that we really need around that council table. So what we did, what the Legend Bylaw Committee recommended is they recommended a completely new map. So only five regions and then to fill the other seats that are required on council to make a total of nine elected members of council, um, they chose to go with nursing practice areas to increase our diversity on council. So region one, that southwest part of the province, that actually used to sort of be two regions. It extended up into region three. And same thing on the other side, region two used to be a smaller region down in the southern portion and then a region more northerly. So that's, that's uh, a big change for us. Um, and I know that, that this is how important the nominations committee work is. We need to get this word out there. And I was so delighted. I don't know how many of you uh, got your mail recently, but there's this great new news bulletin from the SRNA. I just think it's fantastic. And the middle spread of it is all about the nominations and it's got the map and it actually tells you. So let's say you're looking at this and you say, well, I actually am region five. I live and work in Regina. When, when can I run for council? So if you look at this map, um, region five actually is up in 2020. So you can look at this. And when I'm, when I'm talking to members and they say, well, yeah, I'm interested. Okay, you live and work in Saskatoon. Okay, Saskatoon will be up in 2021. So you've got some time to think about it. You know, attend a meeting, start getting involved. Uh, you know, uh, build up uh, some of your competencies as you lead up to the election in 2021 or 2022. So uh, this was a great spread and I would absolutely refer anyone who got their uh, SRNA uh, regulation um, news bulletin to literally just open it right to the middle and you've got everything you need right there. Okay, so back to the practice areas. So this year, we are targeting for the very first time, this is gonna be an inaugural seat. I think it's pretty special and I'm, I'm really excited about um, who may come forward and put their name on the ballot for this. So the nursing practice area that we are looking at is a nurse who works in nursing education, administration, policy, or research. And it is for a three-year term, same as all the other 
member at large position. So remember, president and president elect are two, but the member at large are three, and it just allows some consistency. Next year, we will be electing a new practice area, and that practice area will be for uh, a ner clinical nurse specialist or uh, uh, so a nurse that works in specialty practice, which be a clinical nurse specialist, a nurse practitioner, an, an RN with additional authorized practice, or a direct care nurse. So that's going to ensure we have that diversity of voices at the table. But this year, we are targeting academia, administration, policy, or research. So if you know a nurse, or let's say you do live in Regina, and you fit the bill that you work in research, you're a nurse researcher, and maybe you're a nurse academic, you can then run because this seat is not tied to a geographical area. So I think this is an important piece because it's so new. This is the first time we're doing this. We're really trying to get this word out as we talk to members. Okay, and then finally, as I told you, we change up the people on the nominations committee every second year or every year. So um, we are looking for one person to come and work with me on the nominations committee. Alrighty, so that's our 2020 election. That's who you can who you can expect to see on the ballot. And um, remember, um, unlike um, unlike government elections, we vote. No matter where you live or work in this province, you vote for every one of these positions. You, if you work in East End, and that is Region One. You also get to vote for who's president-elect. You get to vote for region two. You get to vote for the practice area. We vote to fill the council, not just our, that seat um, in our area. So that's another important piece. Okay, 1230, I think I'm doing okay for time. So the nurse, the nominations package is very straightforward. I don't want anyone to be scared away about running for SRNA because you think the nomination uh, documents are too complicated. They're very simple. There is four parts. Part A is simply you agree to accept the nomination and you have another member, another nurse in good standing who signs that form and agrees to nominate you. That's as simple as it is. You put in your, you know, just like filling out a form, what's your, you know, where do you live, um, date it, sign it. That's part A. Very simple. Part B you agree to accept that nomination. So there's another form that has to be filled out. Part C is your professional position statement. So it has to be um, max 150 words, very succinct, of why you're interested in um, getting involved with the SRNA, what competencies and skills you're gonna bring and why people should vote for you. So that's the position statement. And then part D is just a beautiful photo and that's used, of course, for promotion. Any of you that have been involved in, the, in voting, you'll see all their pictures are there. You can click on that position statement. You can read it before you vote. So deadline, anyone, make sure you get this on your 2020 calendars, January 27th at noon. Uh, we will not accept late packages. And uh, that then the work of my committee is essentially complete. Okay, so if you're looking for that nomination package, again, just go to the SRNA website, type in uh, council election in that little, um, little magnifying glass icon, and it'll bring it right up for you, okay? And if you need any help, you can always phone the SRNA. They're uh, great people to talk to, and Tracy will answer the phone at the front desk, and, and uh, she'll get you directed to the right person. Okay. So after you've been nominated, so after that January 27th date, uh, council will meet in February. They uh, then say, yep, nominations committee, you've done your work, we're happy, you know, we've got this slate of candidates, good job, and now proceed with the election campaign. So depending on what you're running for, you are entitled to participate in one of these Wednesday webinars where I will host and be asking questions. You will have the questions all in advance. Nobody's ever put on the hot seat. We actually want to showcase the brilliant candidates who put their name um, on the ballot and give people a chance to get to know them uh, before they vote, before, uh, 
before the um, voting period opens. So March 4th, anyone who um, is got their name on the ballot for the nominations committee, I will be hosting a webinar that day and you will get to meet your, your um, candidates. On March 11th, we will meet the candidates for the council positions for member at large. Remember, that's region one, southwest, region two, southeast, and then that very, very new and exciting um, practice area seat for academia, uh, uh, management, policy, or research, okay? So anyone um, that has their name on the ballot, they are entitled to participate in this. Uh, each person will be given time to speak, and then we'll have some questions that everyone will answer. And then March 18th, we will uh, also get to meet uh, the people who've put their name on the ballot to run as our next president, and so our president-elect position. So those are important dates to um, be mindful of. Um, campaign support is provided through the staff, uh, direct through Tanya, who you met, who opened this webinar, um, and her team in uh, communications. So they will assist in creating videos with, you know, everything that you need um, for this. They also will promote it on social media and all those things. So uh, great support. In fact, this year for the first time, we actually did a survey of members who ran in the past. Uh, we went back uh, three years, I do believe. And we asked them, you know, what were some things that went well? What were some things we can approve on in this uh, election campaign and in this process? So it was to inform the nominations committee work. And one of the things that came up repeatedly was people said the support that they had from the SRNA during the campaign, any questions they had, the help they needed for these webinars, videos, anything, they were so grateful. And um, they, that was probably one of the easiest pieces for them. So don't be scared away by that. It sounds like it's actually a lot of fun. Okay. So to submit a nomination, again, uh, it comes to the nominations committee. Our deadline is noon on January 27th. You can email them in, you can mail them in, or you can fax them in. And that information is there, but it's also available on the website. Okay. So uh, if you have any questions, these are the people that you're gonna connect with. So uh, Joanne Hahn is the administrative assistant who will handle uh, member linkages. And the lovely Tanya is the uh, director, and uh, she is our liaison also within our, our nominations committee. You've got the phone numbers there. So any of those questions. And now, Tanya, um, has there been any questions from the people watching our webinar today? There has not been. We do have some participants on the line, so if there are any questions, now would be the time to post them in the Q&A area or the chat area. I can see both of those. Yeah. So it's been, um, it's been very, uh, until any questions come up and because we still have a little bit of time, I'm just gonna uh, talk a little bit about um, some of the work that the nominations committee has done. So we have directly connected via phone call with those 174 people who expressed an interest when they did their reg renewal. Um, anyone who was keenly interested, of course, you know, some people when we contacted them said, you know, it's not for me right now, or I don't live in that, or don't live in that region. Um, and then, you know, we always offer, you you could come on nominations, you can consider president-elect. So we, we offer up all the opportunities. It's, it's just a really, really great way to connect with members. And I just wanna share a couple, of cute, uh, a couple of nice little stories, I think, that have come out of the work that the nominations committee does. So I actually had a member who I spoke to, uh, who is retired now, just recently retired. And, and she said, well, you know, I consider this, but I'm retired. And, and I said, well, you know, there's other ways to get involved. And so I directed her to the professional practice group and she was really excited about that. And so probably if she hadn't have ticked that box, she wouldn't have got that personal connection from our, um, with um, someone from our committee. And uh, yeah, so that was really exciting to, um, to, to do that. And then I've also been able to direct some people who, some members who have expressed an interest, but 
you know, the time has to be right. You have to be ready to, uh, you know, the time commitment. Uh, it has to work with your personal life and your professional life. And so they said, well, I'd, I'd like to consider the nomination in Regina in a couple of years. You know, how else can I get involved in the lead up to that? And my first recommendation is to get involved as a workplace rep. And so I've referred uh, a number of nurses to the workplace rep through program through this committee work. And they're going to get involved that way. And then I also I'll always encourage members to vote and to come out to the annual general meeting. It's, it's an important part of our work. That's where we vote on these bylaws that affect our practice and affect all of these things. Like this past year, we voted on this big change in our electoral regions and the practice area. So, um, and nurses are really, they're, you know, they were very, very grateful to get that information. So it's, uh, it works out nice. It's a nice way to connect with people. Yeah. So we do have one. Any question. questions? We do. Oh, good. Okay. Yep. So the question is, any, in advice, any advice for potential candidates in regards to message slash purpose statement delivery as a past board member? Ah, that is a great question. Is so I, I'm going to be quite frank. Okay, and, and um, in the past, we've often seen nurses um, maybe coming on board and coming with, here's my agenda, okay? And that agenda might not align with the purposes of the SRNA. So remember, the SRNA is the regulatory body and the association. So our role is not uh, to promote nurses, individual nurses as such, that's the union's job. Our role is to promote the profession and to protect the public. And we do that by supporting members, but to, to actually say, I want members to have this particular thing, that's something, if that's related to the socioeconomic um, aspect of our job, that's something that's a union mandate. And so, it's, off, it's often a steep learning curve for people to come on board and say, oh, yeah, okay, I was coming on because I wanted to affect change here, but now I find out that actually our role is over here as the regulatory body. So I think what people want to know in, um, you know, where you work, how long you've been a nurse, you know, the professional part is, is um, I think, the key here. Um, and then, as I said, any of the skills or competencies that you have that you can bring to the table, that is an important piece to include in, in your position statement. Um, and finally, I think the most important thing, just be yourself, just be yourself, but also do that little bit of homework about what, what is the mandate of the SRNA in terms of the association role and the regulatory body and make sure that you're not promoting a um, you know, taking a stand on something that actually isn't within our mandate and coming with your own agenda. Yeah. So I hope, I hope that, uh, I hope that's answered that question. Great. All right. Well, we don't have any more questions. So if you're okay, okay. wrap up the webinar. Um, we will wrap up. <laughs> thank you very much. That was fantastic. Awesome information on how to nominate um, someone for the SRNA Council or the Nominations Committee. So we're looking forward to getting all those nominations in and moving the process forward. You know, the Nominations Committee has done a fantastic job of reaching out and connecting with members who have expressed interest. So thank you to everyone. Yeah. So Tanya, next if I can just, Tanya, yeah. if I can just add one more thing, because I, I don't think I added it. And I didn't do a lot of notes for this webinar because when you've talked to this many people, I'm I can pretty much, you know, it's right on, it's right off the top of my head. But one of the things that I don't think I focused on, and I, I would really like to just take a moment to do that is what's, you know, what's in it for me? What's in it for me to run for council? And so we, we so first of all, we want you to give back to, as I say, this beloved profession. But what's in it for you is an incredible opportunity for professional and personal growth and development. It's stepping into a very strategic leadership role, whether that's a member at large or whether that's the president elect. 
it, this SRNA Council provides strategic leadership and it is an important piece. And I can honestly tell you that five years ago, when at this time of year, when I was considering putting my name on the ballot, I really didn't think I had the competencies for this, but I approached it as an opportunity for growth. And I knew that I had something that I could give back, but I am a changed person because of this experience. It has brought a wealth of opportunities to me, a huge new network of people. And so if you, you know, if you're at all considering, you know, I just want to do something different in nursing, then come get involved with us. It, it, it really is, uh, it's, it's honestly, I've been a nurse for 31 years and being involved with the SRNA for these last uh, four and a half years has been a career highlight. There's nothing that I've done in my career that I will look back on and be more proud of. So uh, I do I do want to uh, encourage people, you know, if you just, just need a little extra spark and you want to come and grow, supported by this amazing network of council members and president-elect and staff and executive director and come and grow, come, come be a part of us. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And of course, give back to your profession. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much, Joanne. It's been wonderful having you on our, on our webinar today, as always. So thank you very much for that. And thank you everyone who's joined. Of course, this webinar will be posted on our a website and our YouTube channel for people to watch. If you've missed any other webinars, feel free to, to jump onto the, to our YouTube channel and, and look at past webinars. There's always awesome information on them. So, and I'd like to encourage everyone to join us next week because next week we will have the chair of the awards committee, Shauna Bright, who will be talking about nominating a colleague for an SRNA award of excellence. So we have that coming up as well. Um, so that, that promises to be a really informative and great webinar as well. So thank you again and uh, have an awesome day. <laughs>